Hi there, and welcome to another pencast for the course of reasoning and logic. This is a second try at a, fun, at a video about structural induction. I created one some four years ago, but the audio wasn't great, so here's hoping this one is a little bit better. So this video is about structural induction. And for the purposes of this video, I assume that you are familiar with at least mathematical induction. The idea that if we prove something for one number, and then we prove that if it holds for an arbitrary number, it holds for the next natural number, it holds for all numbers larger than or equal to that first number we've proven the claim for. This idea, if you are so inclined of dominoes falling over. Now, in structural induction, what we do is we apply the same principle to some other recursively defined set. Consider, for example, the following set S. The set S is a set of strings, pieces of text, and we can construct elements of the set S using the following rules. Rule one says that the string of M is in S. Rule two says that if X is in S, then I, I, X, a is also in S. So what does that mean? Well, let's build some examples here. Rule one says that M is an element of S. Okay, great. Now, because M is an element of S, I, I, M, A is also an element of S. And because I, I, M, A is an element of S, I, 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 M, A, A is also an element of S. All right, let's continue with the third rule. If X and Y are elements of S, then I, X, A, Y, I is also an element of S. Again, let's look at an example. Uh, M and I, I, M, A are both elements of S. So let's take X is M and Y is I, I, M, A and apply the rule. We get I x, x was m, a, y, y was i, i, m, a, followed by an i. This thing is also an element of s by the third rule. Remember also that x and y can take the same value. So for example, they could they both take m as their value. So i, m, a, m, i is also in s. And finally, the fourth rule, nothing else is in S. This rule is important because without it, S could also contain you and me, or even this video, or maybe the machine that you're watching this video on. We don't want any of that. We want it to be just words and just words that are constructed using these rules. Now about this recursively defined set, I can formulate a claim. And the claim I will formulate is the following. For all words x that are in S, the number of i's in x is even. Oh, and my tablet is refusing to write in that last part. There we go. To formalize that a little bit, let fi of x be a function that returns the number of i's in x. Then the claim says for all x in S, 2 divides fi of x. Right? The number of i's is even. It's divisible by 2. If you want, pause the video here. Take a look at the examples we created earlier. See if you can create some examples of your own. See if you think this claim is true. Better yet, see if you can maybe think a little bit about what a proof for this could look like.
that should have been a long enough pause for you to have paused the video. Let's see how I would tackle the problem. So what I want to do is I want to imply this idea of structural induction. How does that work? Well, structural induction, just like regular induction, has two parts of the proof. It has base a base case or base cases, and it has an inductive step. In the base cases, what we do is we take a look at all the non-recursive rules. What do I mean by non-recursive? Well, a non-recursive rule is the opposite of a recursive rule, okay, is a rule that just says this thing is in there, or these things are in there. Sure, it could be also A is in S and maybe the number 3 is in S, I don't know, stuff like this. But it's different from these recursive rules. Recursive rules are things that say if something is in S, then something else is also in S. Right? They use the property of it being in S to construct new things that are also in S. These are recursive rules. The base case deals with non-recursive rules. So we're going to do a proof. Beautiful P there because I need to move this thing down again. By structural induction. All right. Let me quickly pause the video here and update two settings on my drawing tablet, and then I'll be right back to do this proof with you. All right. So, proof by structural induction. Let's start with the base case. And like I said, in the base case, we handle all the non-recursive rules. So in this case, there's just one thing we need to consider, the word M. Okay, so what about the word M? Well, for the word M, the number of i's in m is zero, just the letter m, there's no i's in there. Uh, and zero, last time I checked, is two times zero. So two divides zero, or two divides f i of m. So the base case holds. Now let's look at the inductive step. In the inductive step, we're going to take a look at the recursive rules and there's two here, of our recursively defined set. And similar to uh, mathematical induction, we need an inductive hypothesis. So what is our inductive hypothesis? Well, take arbitrary, arbitrary, um, let's say k uh, in S, such that Two divides f i k. Oh, and this has disappeared behind my face. So what we're gonna do is zoom out a little bit and move this. There we go. Um, is that all? Well, if we take a look at this rule, we see that we actually need two objects, x and y. So in our inductive hypothesis, we also introduce two objects, k, such that 2 divides the number of i's in k, but also l, such that 2 divides the number of i's in l as well. Now, what do we need to prove? We need to prove that rule 2 works. Okay, so we need to prove that 2 divides the number of i's in i, i, k, a. And we need to prove that 2 divides, rule 3, the number of i's in i, k, a, l, i. Now, before we do this formally, hopefully it is clear that this is true. After all, if the number of i's in k is even, and I add two i's to it, clearly the result will also be even. It will be the next even number. Similarly here, if we have an even number of i's in k and an even number of i's in l, if I add them together, I have an even number. And then when I add two more, I should still have an even number. 
Now, let's prove it formally. Since we no longer need to see the rules of the set, uh, we can scroll up a bit more. So the number of i's in i, i, k, a is equal to the number of i's in i, i plus the number of i's in k plus the number of i's in a. I've just split the words into three parts. Now, what do I know? I know that this is equal to 2, and I know that this is equal to 0. Furthermore, I know that this thing is divisible by 2. So I can write it as 2 times, let's go for, um, I don't know, which letters haven't I used yet? Um, I was going to go for M, but we can use it as part of the word creation. Uh, let's go for uh, Y, why not? Okay, well, that is 2 times y plus 1, which is 2 times z. So 2 divides f of i, or f i of i, i, k, a. It is even. It is 2 times some integer z. Now let's take a look at the second part. We also need to prove that i k a l y is uh, the number of i's in this is divisible by two okay well this is the number of i's in i plus the number of i's in k plus the number of i's in a l and in i which is one plus two times y plus zero plus two times I need yet another constant. Let's go for C plus 1, which is 2 times Y plus C plus 1, which is 2 times Z. So 2 divides F of I. And this is behind, hiding behind my camera again. So let me write it down here. 2 divides F of I or F I of I K A. L I. So we have proven both parts of what we set out to prove. Of course, the proof isn't quite done yet. Since K and L were arbitrarily Chosen, this holds for all x s. So by the principle of structural induction for all x, Two divides f i of x for all x in s, I should say. Two divides f i of x. This last line is just falling off the screen as well. There you go. Q e e. So, what did we do? Well, when confronted with our recursively defined set s, we use structural induction to prove a claim about all the elements in S. We used the non-recursive rules in our base case, and we used the recursive rules in our inductive case. Since we needed two elements, we introduced two arbitrary elements, and then we showed that each of these rules preserves the property. And then we ended the proof, writing some English. That's it for our first example of structural induction. I will see you around in the next video. Bye for now.